welcome back again. You know the deal. Let's get back to it. Do some more missions. Earn some more money. Get some more training. Eventually I'll probably get some weapons and armor. This is going to be a long, boring career as a student. Game four. <coughs> For training. Yes. Oh, did well. Thanks. Absolutely, sir. Yep. Okay. Weapons. Can't move or fire. <laughs> now, what did I say? Let's see. The Locus has a couple machine guns and a medium laser. The Wasp has a missile pack, a small missile pack, and a medium laser. Roughly equivalent. Maybe a little bit better. The Chameleon, as I said, I looked it up. It's got two medium lasers, two small lasers, kind of like energy weapon versions of the machine gun. They generate a little bit of heat, but they don't need ammo. Uh, two machine guns and a large laser. Longer range than most of these other weapons, does more damage, and of course generates more heat. Let's try this thing out. Looks similar to a locust, uh, wasp. Because it's the there's basically two models, one for the uh, chicken walker style trash can sort of mech, and one for the bipeds. No verbose and yes, see graphics. Now, here's the turn-based battle uh, system. You can walk, run. Some mechs have jump jets, some don't. You can target weapons on things. There's look at all those weapons have a third of these if we were... Okay, there's that locust. Anybody else? No. Let's target him. You can assign weapons to targets. Uh, let's just set everything on there. They're out of range. Most of them are out of range, but you notice that large laser is at long range? There's three categories. Short, medium, and long. The further away, the harder it is to hit, logically. Scan our friend. Any other units? No. Us. There's your first mech, a chameleon, 50 tonner. There's room for a passenger in the back. Now, normally there's a um, two segments to every of these body parts: the arms, the legs, the side torsos, the center torso, the head, and the back sections for the side and center torsos. There'd be a green armor bar and then a red internal structure bar. Now, as I said. This is a training mech. It doesn't have internal structure. So we've got the weapons, we've got the armor, the actuators are for the limbs. They're the control mechanisms that translate your commands into actual movement. The muscles, polyacetylene fibers, that contract and expand under electrical current. That's how a mech manages to move. I think originally they developed this uh, polymer of polyacetylene in an attempt to create artificial muscles for prosthetic legs and that, but the shortest bundle they could get was about five feet long. Yeah, that's not going to work for people. Maybe if we put it on a big workloading machine. Yeah. So anyway, those are fairly resilient and fairly redundant. You can damage them, they survive, they'll keep functioning. But the actuators in the joints, you know, the joint mechanisms and the machinery that creates those electrical fields, they can be damaged. If they get damaged, you lose mobility. Your arms, any weapons in the arms, become harder to aim. And you can't, you know, like, pick things up. Leg, you might lose the ability to kick with it. Physical combat is a factor. You'll move more slowly, or heaven forbid, you may not be able to move much at all. <coughs> Remember how I said a fusion reactor was the uh, power supply? The engine there has three levels of damage. Basically, it's shielding and control mechanisms. Damage it enough, it starts leaking heat and it doesn't keep things as cool as well. Damage it enough, it'll either shut down or just bleed more heat, which will cause it to shut down. The gyroscope, that keeps the mech upright, that can be damaged or destroyed completely. If it does get destroyed, the mech essentially can't move. 
safely. It will fall over. Another thing is the gyroscope just makes it less likely to fall over. If you make some, if you get struck by a lot of damage, or you uh, make a sudden turn or a difficult maneuver, there's the risk of falling over. That's what your piloting skill comes into. If the gyro is damaged, it makes it more difficult. If the gyro is destroyed, it basically makes any kind of piloting check to keep your balance impossible. Your sensors, again, in the cockpit, they help you target and see things. Makes it harder to shoot things if you're, they're damaged. The heat sinks control your heat. And that's all we have there. So... And now that I've explained how the components on a mech work and what you'll see on a detailed scan, we can get to taking a look at the enemy. Now there you go, that flashing red section is the internal structure of the mech and the different body parts. The Locust is an actual combat model, although its actuators have all been removed, so it can't move and it can't aim properly. Theoretically, that medium laser in the center torso should still be able to shoot, but in practice, it doesn't, thank goodness. So, let's get out there. We can walk six movement points, which get limited by cover. Ordinary terrain, you can move one space per thing, as you can see there. Heavy woods, on the other hand, take up three of those movement points. So we can walk to... Well, you can't walk any further this turn. You might move farther if you tried running. We can run instead, yes. Change our commands. And then one, two, three. Nine movement points for running. Running generates more heat than walking, and of course there's always the risk of a piloting control roll if you've been moving that fast. Uh, let's try jumping instead. Now, jumping intervenes over these... over the terrain in the spaces between, and just, you can move however many you have jump jets. In this case, we've got six. Cool. We can move a full six. The thing to remember is jumping creates a lot more heat than walking or running. And you have to make a piloting roll when you land, to make sure you don't fall over because the terrain can be un uneven. Now, since we've got a lot of thick forest around here, we'll jump clear here this turn. Next unit? Well, this is the only unit. We can flee if things go bad. We can tell the computer to do the fighting for us. Which, don't want to do that. That's no fun. Oh, and they simplified physical combat down to kicking. Punching, some mechs don't have hands, so you can't do it with every mech. So, we'll tell our unit to kick when it reaches the range, and we begin the fight. Turn-based combat. You've planned your orders, now he's set his orders, and we'll see what happens. Nothing, because he's still got, if you look at the left side there, you see the edge of a building. That building is between you and him. Technically, he's dragging himself along, rolling or shifting, basically moving one space per turn. Not pulling much off, but it will make a difference. Now that we're clear of the uh, rough terrain, we can run and move faster. <coughs> we're down to medium range for that large laser, and we're still not in any any usable range for the medium or, or the small of the machine gun. Hmm. Alright, things haven't changed. Well, let's take a close look at ours. Yep, that's looking good. And, oh, sorry about that. Don't know if you heard the phone, but, uh, yeah. So, back to this. I won't get this battle done. Looks good. And there we go again. I gotta slow DOS box down. This is going too fast. Okay, he is moving slightly down. We'll keep running. Ooh, can't go into that area, so it'll take the AI to go around to the best way to it. Check our weapons ranges. Ah, the medium lasers are in range now. And nothing's changed. Run again. Doo -doo -doo. There. Scan enemy. Hasn't moved much because he's crawling. And that should... There we go. 
Bam! Missed! Oh well. And it'll go from the top of your weapons list down through as they show up in range. So it fired the medium laser since that was earlier. And missed with everything. Because, you know, I suck. Now, detailed scan. Aha! Look at that heat bar. That me large laser and the two medium lasers created a bit of heat. That with the standard 10 heat sinks in the mech and the heat of running actually overwhelmed it and it's starting to accumulate some. If you do things right, your heat sinks can dissipate any heat that you create and you stay at a neutral heat level. As things get hotter, the, the Mirmer muscles, plastic muscles in your mech, become less effective and you don't move as fast and you lose accuracy and you also uh, risk ammunition that you're storing in your mech exploding and of course the worst thing is the engine shut down too much heat reduces the fusion reactors ability to safely function so it decides to shut off not good in the middle of a fight anyway we'll run up aha there we go boom second hit third hit all right let's take a look at our enemy now Yep, took off all the armor on his right torso most of the armor on his left leg and some of the armor off of his head that large laser is nice but yeah that's gonna start having an effect we're gonna have to scale back on our weapons well obviously we don't need the small lasers or well, actually let's shut off the large laser override cancel and turn off one of the medium lasers and let go with the machine guns and small lasers for the rest of it and we'll walk now because we don't we're getting close notice we can only move five spaces not six heat's making us less effective Ooh, got a critical we got through the armor and damaged something inside same location yar center torso well, okay mm, small laser missed ah there's one of those little cutscenes left leg machine gun da -da -da -da. walk over again I think we're sort of staying neutral might want to ease off on those yeah, it's getting a little cooler the small lasers are probably generating heat we're getting close so destroyed one of his heat sinks. <coughs> Excuse me. And another thing to remember is damage will transfer. If you target and hit a location that's been destroyed, that damage still counts as a hit on the mech, but it'll move to the next nearest location. Say, an arm that's missing will move to that side torso, the side torso will move to the center torso. Remember, the center torso is where the engine and gyro are, the critical items. And that should be good. Ooh, right arm. Right torso, miss. Center torso, miss. Kick! Ah, transferred. Critical in the leg, which transferred to the side torso, which was eliminated, which transferred to the center torso. Let's take a look at him now. Yep, we damaged his gyro, destroyed the medium laser in the center torso. The right arm has lost its machine gun. Side torso lost its other heat sink there. There's two. Oh, he's in bad shape now. And this is pretty much a fait accompli at the risk of sounding dangerous. And we've bled off all our heat. So let's just finish this bugger off. Let loose everything in an alpha strike, as they refer to in the first person shooter games. Boom! I'm behind him, so I'm hitting his rear torso. That's it! Destroyed! You should return to base now. Yay! And there's a wreck. One thing to note, the map is persistent. So if you do some, leave a wreck somewhere, it'll stay there for the rest of the game. Yep. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it was getting... If I could feel the heat. Thanks. And thanks for watching. See you soon.